Hi there, in this video I just wanted to show you the Tempore controller. That's something that actually has been around since Pi uh, 3314. Uh, I'm on 328 I think, yeah, Florence. And in order to demonstrate this 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 widget, I just thought I'd use the QGIS releases really. Uh, the QGIS releases have got a date uh, um, you know, for each, each release. And I just wanted to see, um, well, geographically, based on the name of the release, i.e. Florence or, or um, what have you, uh, just where did they, um, Zanzibar, um, sort of where they were geographically located as each year sort of went by. Um, I've taken a couple of assumptions on the naming uh, and obviously uh, I don't think I've mapped the Pi one. <laughs> um, but um, as you can see, I've, if I look at my table, this is just a CSV file. Um, oh, sorry, I meant attributes. So here you see I've got a, uh, there's the code name. So Bon and Madeira, you know, Zanzibar, uh, Zanzibar, you, you know, requests. So the, 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 there's some clear names there. Um, obviously, Pi, like I said, I, I don't have coordinates for, but I suppose I could have just made up something. And the core one, um, I made an assumption there. I th it's, it's a place in India, weirdly. I've actually been near there um, on my travels. So, um, um, so yeah, I made a, a, an assumption about that one. Um, but the point is they've got a release date, a single field. If I just click at the top. Yeah, so I was on the 3rd of 3rd. And then down here, I've got this one, um, version one uh, on the 5th of the 1st. So point being, I'd like the, the, these points to slowly appear on the map as the years tick by. I've used point geometry, could be anything, could be any um, layer. And, in, and it, like I said, the data's come from a CSV file. So, you, you know, it's not, it's not delicate about um, data source or anything or geometry. So just go for it, this will get you going. How do you do use temporal controller? There's a widget up here, clock face, click on that. And um, what, and that, and that kind of that brings up the controller but what you've got to do is make sure if you click on right and mouse click on your properties for the layer is that you, on temporal properties you've got these settings configured you need to you know activate them so this will give you a dynamic control over the layer in terms of, of time um, and this is probably what you're you're really after rather than a simple date time slice um, so I've got a, uh, well that's correct, I've got a single field with date time and I um, I want to include the start and end to sort of draw, there's, there's sort of no, no limits really. The field is indeed release date, that's the only field I've got that's a date type. Um, I could, um, and, I, and I want to accumulate features over time, but actually I could say, you, you know what, just leave them on the, the map effectively for, um, for for a specific duration, you know, of an event. The, the, these are sort of called events. You know, something happened, and so you can imagine it could be maybe earthquake data or something. But uh, I've, I've just got these as releases for, of, of this software. Um, but I'm I'm just going to pile up the points over time. I'm going to accumulate them. I don't want them removed from the map. Press OK. And as you can see, the map's cleared a bit because it um, the start point for my controller, when you turn this on and off, is um, the, the uh, that one over there. Um, and uh, if I just click on that, yeah, 5th of the 1st. And you can see that the current frame up there, you can see what the current frame is set at, which, is, which includes that. Uh, so you have to imagine, I've, I'm, I'm looking through time now. I'm, I've, I've got this time rendered layer it's not just a simple layer so it's literally as expected adding another dimension um this is something our art just users will be familiar with um they've got, they've got sort of timeline um capability uh, i'm trying to think if it's i don't think it's in map info i can't remember um i'll have a look but anyway um and it used to be a plugin this it used to be a plugin called called time series animator or something uh, but now it's it's a it's a widget so what do we want to do here? Well, when you when you hit this refresh here, uh, you can have a look at the other options. You can set to the f um, the full range of what is in the data. So when we look to that attribute table, you can see that you know from the third of the third. So that's why it's captured that as the end. 
uh, and from the let's reverse that so the start there is fifth of the first you see and then the end third of the third so that's what effectively that refresh is do doing reading the data and setting the start and end to what you want how do you want the playback to happen i actually um we could do it by months but that um, yeah there's some gaps between releases so it's probably quicker just to do years make a sort of step um uh, every animated frame is, is is like a year so um let us press play let's just go for it so i press play and you can see it flicking through changing the dates up here so first so we're now into that year into 2015 2017 2018's view appearing 2020 21 22 and there was another one drawn in 23. i mean you can use the map as this is doing so um let's just zoom into this sort of north northern europe sort of area um and let's just um and if i if i grab hold of the widget as you can see i can um sort of pull back and look through um the time sort of steps so and and sort of look at my data um like that uh, which is pretty neat really as you can imagine you, you, you can have much more um, you, can, you can have shaded polygons or something you know thematics etc heat maps and, and stuff you could, you could do some interesting st uh, stuff with this but this is just to show you with, with this point data especially when you've got a mass of point data perhaps epidemiological data or something um, you, you know certainly for things like sort of covid and things like that be very appropriate anyway uh, note there's a little settings button over here um, you can just do a couple of um, sort of changes here. You can just uh, set the uh, frame rate, for example, how many frames per second. So there's, you know, there's a, there's a little 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 change there you can do. One thing to note here is you can actually save the animation. Uh, that's what the save button here will do. Export the animation. Uh, if you click on that, you can set your file naming convention. And um, let's put this in that folder I created um, before. Uh, you can set the uh, just I've just left it as the current extent, uh, the kind of uh, resolution you're after, pixels, and um, the uh, the the range you're including in this, which is just defaulted to that. So when you press save on this, what it will do is output each PNG, and actually if I pull the dialog over here, you can see them all being created, and and there you go. So you can use these PNGs as, as you wish, perhaps to create a GIF or some other software or, or what have you. But that's how you um, export the animation, just by the little save button. Um, but anyway, that's that's more or less it. Um, the key thing to remember uh, about this all is properties, uh, temporal component of this properties. Make sure you, you set what you need in here uh, and then uh, off you go. Um, but you know, that's a quick start. A few, but, but a few other buttons there for you to play with. But I hope that gets you going. Thank you.